Podtacular episode 145, Multiplayer Tips and Map of the Month, Foundry, for the week of January 16th, 2008. Don't make me rat you up to HR. You are the seminar. Welcome to Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. You're about to hear what the Halo Nation had to say about this week's topic at Podtacular.com to help you dominate at Halo. So strap on your Spartan armor and grab a battle rifle because it's time to finish the fight. It's come down to just you and me. A battle will decide our destiny. My brothers are dead and my family is hurt. I'm on the ground. No, I'm on the ground. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Pod Tackle of the Unofficial Halo Universe Podcast. I'm Fumo Jai. And I'm JVB. And I am Zervon. Thank you for joining us today, Zervon. Thanks for having me. So, Mr. Zervon, uh, why don't you tell the Pawtacular community a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm just kind of a regular guy from uh, Second Foundation uh, website. We just kind of play Halo casually and try to have fun around the universe. I can hear that. So, what exactly... Is there anything specific that you do at the uh, the website? Uh, nothing really in particular. I just kind of, uh, if I find any news throughout the community, I'll report that back to some of the people, and we can get that in the show that we do and things like that. So why don't you uh, let everybody know the name of your show and the URL where we can find it at? Uh, the name of our show is uh, The Riot, and you can find it on uh, second-foundation.net. Sweet. Now, you guys uh, work with the Clan of Bobs a little bit, too, right? Not so much. Uh, it used to be that way. We kind of separated our ways. Oh, okay. That's cool. Was there any uh, specific reason, like any controversy you want to let everybody know about? Uh, not particularly. It's just kind of a thing. It kind of died out, I think. Yeah, yeah. Probably yeah, I'm just of... busting your chops. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because of clan support, right? That pretty much went away, so clans are less uh, prominent now. Well, I wouldn't say that. Hmm. So, how are the clans doing? How are doing the clans doing? Well, I say. Okay. Okay. I'd say we're doing pretty good. We've got uh, a nice sized clan running right now. If we can call ourselves clans anymore, I suppose. So, I take it you guys you do it the same way. You prefer more like social groups? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I take it you guys uh, run your clans the same way that most people do on Halo 3 as far as like setting up a silver account and then. You know, having people having people uh, be on that friends list of the silver account, and then do the friend of friends on that. Uh, yeah, pretty much. We uh, it's definitely a lot easier to keep us organized now that we've got that uh, friend of friend list going. Cool, cool. Yeah, that is a nice feature, the friends of friends. It does help people, for example, like your website, try to maintain some type of uh, organization since there's no clan support. But is there? A sense of inconvenience because there's no clan support? I mean, at least in your forums, do you feel that way? I don't think so. I think uh, what Microsoft is doing to try to keep up with that is sufficient, at least for now. Yeah, that's the key word, for now. I think people are going to um, eventually grow a little weary of that. I mean, unfortunately, there's not much we can do, but it was a big feature that they took away from us. Yeah, I guess ultimately, you know, there's not all that much difference between the silver account front of friends and clans. Um, once you could, is I'm talking about clans in the sense of after uh, clan matches went away, um, it's pretty much the same thing. Though the one difference is being able to message your entire clan. And I think that would be awesome if it could stay the same way as like for the founder of the clan or something like that. Or you know, if there was some way to be able to message the whole clan to get out. Uh, you know, notices and things like that. I mean, you can do it in the uh, on Xbox.com as far as sending a message and then adding everyone to the re- recipients. But the only thing is, is you can only do that to, what, up to 90 or 95 people, which is a little frustrating because, hello, the friends list is a limit of 100 people. And, our, I mean, one of our clans is full. So that means you got to figure out which people you didn't send it to and then add that to a second message and hope you didn't duplicate anything or miss anyone. And it gets, I don't know, that's a little silly. Yeah, yeah, but eh, like I said, there's nothing we can do right now. Just try to utilize it the best way we can. 
Yeah, and ultimately that's a pretty minor thing. I mean, I'm really happy that at least they set this up. There, this was a big improvement over what it was before. So, hey, beggars can't be choosers, right? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I think so. forms pretty much. Uh, I think forms pretty much keep that problem to a minimum, though. I mean, you can put a mes- message up there, and pretty much anyone can see it that needs it. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. So, Fumo, what do we have in store for our fabulous show today? Well, this week is the Multiplayer Tips and Map of the Month show for Foundry. Uh, we're going to be talking about all how to do well on Foundry, whether it's uh, whether it's forging in Foundry, whether it's playing on the default map in matchmaking or in custom games, or some people send in uh, I think some people send in tips on how to how best to play their favorite custom games on Foundry. So there's going to be a lot you know a lot of variety on this one as far as that goes, and definitely plenty of general multiplayer tips as well. So our goal is to help you guys level up and stay there. Let's hope that works. All right. Yes, sir, Bob, and let's get this baby rolling. We have X Geege X Geege G W E G. Okay, he says first of all, when you start a game, make everyone count. Don't go running out there thinking that you're going to get all the kills. That also goes with watching your friends back and not calling them noobs or something. Try and travel around together because it's it's easier to kill someone if it's two on one, but not too close together. Meaning that if you're too close, somebody with rockets or something can get a double kill. Also says that uh, a lot of people keep screaming at me because I steal their kills. But if you're playing a Team Slayer game, it's all about the team score. If your friend is getting a sh- is, if your friend is getting shot at, help them out. Also, when you start a game, go for the power weapons to ensure your victory. Don't take a weapon though if one of your teammates is way better than you. Finally, if you treat your your teammates with respect and not yell at them, they will play a lot better. Everyone is going to be just as good, uh everyone isn't going to be as good as you sometimes. Thanks Potacular, you rock. Also, don't step on cats and keep fragging them. So you'd rather not step on a cat but you'd rather frag them? I don't get that one. Yeah, what's up with but that? But anyway, uh, thank you, uh, Geech. <laughs> he makes some good points here because one of the, the main things that I see a lot if I'm playing in a random room is that people go for, for example, the sniper rifle and they absolutely suck. And you try to explain, look, drop it, don't give it to me, but give it to somebody who can snipe, please. And also, you know, it's a simple rule, but it's it's, you know, written in stone. Team Slayer, you know, the keyword team. Don't worry about somebody stealing your kills. You're still going to get an assist. And, you know, be a team player, like he's, like he says here. Because, you know, you will, with, with a lot of assists, you will uh, level up. It does count. So don't be greedy. You know, one yeah, thing... He also mentions, you know, you want to... Go ahead, man. He also mentions uh, you want to, like, try to stay together and work as a team, you know, if you... Uh, attack people together, you're going to have a higher chance of, like, both of you surviving and getting the kills. So, yeah, I was going to say something about that as well, is that as far as working together goes and going in pairs, um, that can be really valuable, especially, like, being able to concentrate two-on-one fire, because as long as you can get the shot off first and you're both aiming at the same person, you're going to kill them before they kill you, you know, barring things like grenades and rockets and things like that or someone uh, flanking you or something. The thing is with that is that you can't always agree with someone that you need to stick together with them or that they need to follow you or something like that. So sometimes one, one thing I suggest is like following someone else, you know, so just kind of staying behind them and keep an eye on where they're shooting at. And as soon as they start firing at someone, you know, you join in on the fire. You may not always get the, the kill first, but your team is going to be in the, uh, you know, in the black. And that's what counts is getting a good kill death ratio. Exactly, exactly. And that you know, that's the main point. Don't die and get more kills than deaths. Even if it's even if you get two kills, but if you have no deaths, that's a whole you know, that that makes a huge difference. It definitely does, yeah. The kill death ratio is what it's all about, man. It's 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 definitely better to have two kills and no deaths than uh, thirty kills and thirty five deaths. <laughs> that's a lot, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a extreme example. <laughs> Man, that means they killed your teammates only 15 times. <laughs> I'm just imagining how that would work. You know, one guy is like sitting back there and being real careful sniping. The other guy's just like, ah, he's like a suicide bomber the whole time. 
I <laughs> know. <laughs> uh, ah, I'm gonna pawn you all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we have uh, General. Hoo-ah. Yes, we do. Who's gonna take that one? I'll do it. He says, "Hey, this is General Hua again. Just wanted to say that for me, the best Hoo-ah. tip that I would give Hua to people about multiplayer is that play as long as you can. Learn the area, where the best sniping spots are, where the essentials are located, like rocket launcher, sniper, etc." And just have fun. Keep on fragging trucks. Keep up the good work. Okay, well, I guess that's a good tip. That's it. Thank you. hoo <laughs> Must be a Marine. <laughs> he is a general. Well, you know. Dude, I saw, that reminds exactly, me. I saw this yeah. bumper sticker today that said, uh, it, it just said, hoo at the bottom, and it said, it's a Marine thing underneath that. <laughs> <laughs> that about sums it up, I guess. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> All right, dear. Zervon, you're next. The Hawk 422 says, when playing a matchmaking Team Slayer game on Foundry, it's most players' instincts to go immediately, run around the corner, straight into the fray. This is risky, though, because most of the time, whichever team gets their hands on the power drain will go and wipe out the entire opposing forces. Instead of taking this risk, get your team to go toward your sniper rifle corner, which you can load up on grenades and weapons. It's very easy and it's very advantageous to move your team to the top of the various crates and boxes so you can have the upper hand on any enemy on the lower level. From above, you're practically untouchable by any grenades or equipment that are thrown towards you from below. Dude, where is the sniper rifle on this? Mm, nice. I think there's like a corner wall in the two far corners away from like the back rooms. I'm not really sure myself actually because I haven't played too much Foundry. Okay, so the Foundry map is shaped like a U in the default configuration. So are you talking about, like, at the the bottom left and bottom right of the U? Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's cool. I always have trouble finding that sniper rifle. Yeah, I, I went and looked around uh, pretty thoroughly on, on the map before we before we got in here. I didn't, I didn't see it. I did find the rockets, but... Um, and that does make sense where those are because it's it's kind of a difficult spot to get to and it, it leaves you a little bit open on certain parts. But once you get it, it's it's it becomes you know super powerful and can really turn the tides. Yep. I mean that that specific map is a little hard to sit back and snipe simply because of all the vehicles. But if you can do it, I mean more power to you. You mean because of all the boxes and everything and just how crowded it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The box. Oh. The boxes. Well, I mean, some people stand on top of the, uh, they're not crates, but the giant, uh, what do they call those? Well, giant boxes. I'm just going to call those. And, uh, I mean, sometimes they're effective if their teammates get, get their hands on the rockets and things like that. But, I mean, I've tried sniping on this map and it's like, oh my god. <laughs> I don't have the time to just sit back. Yeah, really. I mean,. You can't get far enough away. I think the the thing with sniping is that you rely on making it difficult for someone to find you quickly after you've shot them. You know, uh, I think that's the point of any mid to long range um, fire is that you make the, make it diff- difficult for them to turn around and get a beat on you and be able to take you out in return. And that's the whole point is getting an advantage over him. So with this, you don't have really that distance or anything, or, or like long, uh, you know, narrow areas or anything like that to be able to snipe people out and not, you know, not have them get behind cover. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in this one, you better know how to no scope. Uh, I mean, that's my biggest advice here. For sure. You got the sniper shotgun going on. <laughs> Definitely. All right, so we're going to move over to uh, Arbitation, and he says, Hey guys, Arbitation here, just a very quick tip from me today. When you're doing Forge on Foundry, make sure you put all of your walls and such down before you you put the grav lift and man cannons in. He says, keep on fragging trucks, Arbitation. All right, very brief, but I'm assuming that there is an issue with that. I mean, I haven't, I did, when uh, the new maps came out, I did attempt to empty out everything in uh, Foundry, and I sort of know what he's talking about, but I mean, do you have any experience, Fumo or Zervon? I think he means just uh, to make sure you have your, like, map layout down first, so you can kind of get your aim for the main cannons and stuff, so you're not, like, running into something that 
you don't really want to, things like that. Yeah, that's what I got too, is that make sure you're not man canning you right into a wall. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was playing the other day was, um, I mean, we've talked about it plenty of times on this show, was, uh, I forgot the, the name of it, but it was equivalent to football, where you had the, the bomb. Griff ball. And you had guys with gravity hammers. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. That was that was pretty sweet. I enjoyed that one. Yeah, man, that's an awesome game, definitely. All righty. Well, let's see. What do we so, have next here? who's next, brother? Okay, so AZN Dude 1 writes in saying, On Lone Wolves, uh, leveling up takes a while and is near impossible on the higher levels, but I've found some tricks to it. Whenever a match is over, the people you just play will most likely end up in the same match the next time. Not all of them, usually one or two. Know how they play and react accordingly in the next match. If you just got pwned the match before, wait a minute or so before clicking start matchmaking to avoid getting matched up with these awesomely amazing people like myself. I know this doesn't work all the time, but I have played with the same person four games in a row before I went and did big team battle. On any cooperative games, find a good team and stick with them. You'll learn each other's strengths, weaknesses, and playing styles so you guys can compensate. Always stick with your teammate, but not too close, or else a well-placed grenade could take you both down. Always wear a headset when playing, because coordinated attacks are better than random ones. Don't worry about past deaths or kills. Always focus on the present, unless you figure something out about your opponent, like, oh man, he's awesome at sticking, or dude, did you see that no-scope of his, or man, that SOB can't use the splazer for BS. <laughs> That's what he writes for BS. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for using harsh letters. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he says, I don't have Foundry yet, but, oh man, dude, writing on Foundry tips, but don't have Foundry, but I think I'll get the maps this weekend. This may have already passed, depending on uh, when you're recording this episode, I may know some Forge tips for Foundry, but I don't know them now, and I'm t- as I'm typing this, blah, 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 blah techno babble. All right, so that's pretty blah, much blah, it. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, yeah, that, that's, uh... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Blada blitter blada blah blah. Sounds like the name sounds sounds like the name of a song or something. <laughs> it's from the office actually. Dude, did you hear that new song? Blada blue de blah blah. <laughs> blada blue de blah blah. <laughs> <laughs> blada blue de blah blah. Blada <laughs> blue de blah blah. <laughs> blada blue de blah blah. <laughs> A little bit of, a little bit of death metal. Dang, man, she'd be a singer. Wow. <laughs> We've got the American Idol triads going on right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Blah, 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 blah. Darkness fills my heart with pain. <laughs> Oh, man, that actually hurt my throat. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. <laughs> okay, who's up next, uh, Servant? Looks like we have Johnny1000. He says, hello again, Podtacular. Johnny1000, again, unfortunately, with a tip for the new map Foundry. Now for the map default. default. Now for the default map, I see. This done a lot in matches since... This map has so many floors and levels, and ambush could happen at any moment. So I get a small group as backup in case of these... Wow, I can't read tonight. I'm sorry. No, I mean, he's case he's of these funky. That's cool. <laughs> of these here, also the higher ground is best because throwing grenades at an arch gives the nade a better chance of hitting the where you want it to go. Also ambushing... Is a lot of fun, especially when they scream, laugh out loud, funny. Okay, maybe not, but LOL. <laughs> but maybe. <laughs> Dude, he's doing all this late speak. Wow. It's getting confusing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, one last thing. There's a way to journey off, out of Foundry, where the windows are, to the right side of the fort, of the fort in Forge. Repeatedly spawn and delete until it goes outside. Also, it has to be receiver node, I think. But I thought it was cool, and you already knew about this. I'm sorry for wasting your precious time. Wow. That was <laughs> You don't have to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate well, your submission. Uh, a little bit incoherent, Johnny, but uh, try again. We spell check. So, uh, can anybody pair? 
phrase I, that. I don't think I understood very well. Yeah, um, yeah, I know that was pretty incoherent, but um, <laughs> not your fault. It's just I still can't get this one word. He said I don't even I have no idea what it means. But um, I, I think basically he's saying that there's there's the thing with Foundry is that there's potential ambushes at all times, like from people jumping down from an upper level because of how when you're going in a narrow hallway and you have pretty tall walls to either side of you and there's, you know, people standing on, on top of those, it's, it's very difficult to see if someone's coming up, if someone's going to jump down onto you from those walls. So you said that, I think that's what he's talking about with the ambushes or throwing grenades for that matter or anything like that. Um, and then he's, I guess he's talking about a way to get out of foundry. I don't know if it's completely outside of foundry, like to where you can see the entire countryside from there. Like you can through the, uh, through the fans or if it's, some other like just in there side of the wall or something weird, but um, have you guys ever seen anything about getting out of Foundry at all? No, I know Laird was doing a few things with uh, Rats the Nest, right? Rats Nest, and that was about it. Yeah, that was the, that was the only thing I've heard about you know getting out of the new maps. I do know that you can get out of Foundry in the sense of you can get to the um, the structure at the at the roof of the map. Um, actually in the ceiling, not the roof. So, like, the supports up there, you can get up there, and you can actually hold a, a matchup to, like, save that as a custom and put spawns up there and the whole thing. Of course, it's kind of ridiculous because you're you're walking on an invisible floor, but then you have a bunch of beams that you're constantly jumping over, uh, and it's just an open area. <laughs> so it's, uh, I don't know. You, you probably can't get objects up there because it's enough to get spawns up there in the first place. So, uh yeah, but anyway, that's something that that glitchers enjoy for some reason. I, I never did understand that. <laughs> like you get out, you get outside the map, and there's nothing to do except yeah. like fall and die or something. And then it's like, woohoo, we got outside the map. I guess it's more of the fact that you can do it. Yeah, the accomplishment of doing it, I guess, right? Because it's difficult. Exactly. Okay, so uh, all right, so we're gonna move on to Dylan Chip Monkey. Nice name. What is a Dylan Chip Monkey? It's hey, Pontacular. I don't know, man. <laughs> is it Dylan, um, like, as in dill yes. pickle or something? Like a dill chip? Uh, and then a monkey that eats... I don't know, man. I'm trying... I'm yeah, made me want to buy some here. chips. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. So, Dylan Chip Monkey says, Hey, Potacular Peoples, this is Dylan Chip Monkey signing in. This is not a tip for Foundry, but a great general use... And a great general tip useful in multiple maps. Teamwork and believing in yourself and or your teammates... Anyway, he says, nah, just kidding. One thing that is important on any map is weapon control. Weapon control can be a deciding factor in any match. For example, let's say you are playing on the map with all the levels and grav lifts at every corner, and you control the sword. You will, almost, you will most likely rack up some major points. And also, you're playing on a map, if you're playing on a map with vehicles, Okay, sorry about that. Where vehicles are a big advantage, then if you have the spanker, which is a the, or the splaser, Spartan laser for those folks who are not in the know, like me, then you can destroy your opponent's vehicles easily, and don't have to worry about them being used against you. It also says keep on fragging potty mouths on Xbox Live and purple-bellied, one-legged Chihuahua-faced chipmunks, chip monkeys with rabies. Wow. Dang. That's an interesting uh, breed of <laughs> animal there. Chihuahua face. I would really like to see a picture of that. Trying to make Chupacabra look like a Sesame Street puppet. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. <laughs> Chupacabra. Yes. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> no, Chupacabra is very picky about what he eats. Yeah, only the cows and goats. I mean, mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> so yes, we we always specify how important it is to control weapons and the right weapons. Don't go out there thinking that you're going to control a map with, let's say, uh, a plasma pistol on Valhalla. You're not going to do it. So. Although that does help a Choose lot right to uh, disable vehicles, that's for sure. And people uh, don't. I, yeah, I don't think if it's they pay done right. To that, you know. Maybe. Yeah, that's the only thing is it doesn't track very well. Nope. So you just gotta. I think the the thing is with that is like if they're tearing things up with the uh, with the turret on that, 
and then they get cocky and they stop for an area and just like mm-hmm. try to circle or try to like stop to take someone out. That's when you can use that and disable the vehicle and then wipe those guys out. Well, I often and and you know not too many people would like to do this, but it does help. I I usually sacrifice myself where I know we're not down by much, but the but the warthog is is destroying us. So what I what I would do is I would purposely jump right in front of the warthog and and disable it, even though I'm gonna die. But at least you know for for a few seconds it's disabled and my teammates they have a chance to you know destroy it. Sometimes it That's works. Cool. It also works a lot All with right. uh, like a turbine. That's uh, really interesting. It actually completely destroys the warthog and it's entertaining to watch. I think. Oh yeah, I, I I did that the other day on on a game of VIP in in a sand trap, and at the very end, I I heard a warthog coming behind me, so I ricocheted the trip mine into my warthog that was in front of me in my base. It ricocheted off, bounced into the sand, and they they were shooting at me, but they ran you know they ran by me and and they blew up. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so that was that was, but we still lost. But yeah, I mean, it, it was somewhat of a of, of nice feeling. You know, one thing Bungie mentioned too one time is is to drop a grav lift uh, right in front of a vehicle when it's chasing you and watch it like fly over your head. Yeah, I've done that. I've done that. <laughs> yeah, I've done I've that. Tried that before uh, during the beta. Awesome. I've done it I and it, it works. Before, but... I mean, and it's been done to me too. I think you have to get your timing though. I've done that. Quite a few times, mostly unsuccessfully. Yeah, they got to be right not next to you and not swerve around. That actually huh? worked. Yeah. Well, especially on a ghost, because they're coming to splatter you. So it usually works with them, because it's a light vehicle and they can just tip over. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, I guess on to the All next right, one well, here. The next one. We got uh, Shotgun Friendly, who says, Yo, guys, it's your everyday neighborhood friendly shotgun, shotgun friendly. <laughs> Well, this week's map is probably one of the most well-known and probably signature Halo 3 map of all time, Foundry. Before I start off my tipping and usual shenanigans, I would like to point out my little map variant of Foundry called The Office. I will not go into detail into it, uh, but I can tell you that The Office has a discussion room coupled with a table, so you can slam something while making your demands, but unfortunately no cup holders. I am, however, working on that. The map also has a dueling room, a soccer court, and a griff ball area all built into it on one map. Wow. Uh, I don't know what kind of office you work in, but... Nice. <laughs> if interested, please go and check out the map. That will hopefully be in my file share soon. Check out the show notes for his gamer tag. Okay, now into Foundry. One tip that I have uh, for you, you can really start out your team with a good start. When you first spawn on the map, quickly go up the stairs ahead of you, grab the power drainer, and drop it down uh, on the opponent's side of the stairs. This will usually knock out all the other team's shields and give you give your team a possible head start if they get around in time to hit uh, to hit them while they're down. Uh, I think he's talking about if you start on the uh, B side because there's they're labeled on like the walls on opposite sides of the map, like you know on the U shape. There's like the left and right side of the U. Well, the the left side would be the A and the right side would be the B. So there, there's a different layout and there's actually a um, power drainer in the center like right at the um if you drew a line right down the middle of the u from the top it's right where it touches the bottom curve um there's a a power drainer there um it's it's basically the part that divides the u in half um but there i think there's also a power drainer on the b side and i didn't see a power drainer on the a side so did you guys do you guys know of any do you, do you know if there's one on both sides no i'm not 100 percent sure yeah, I don't play it enough to really know. Yeah, there's a lot of junk in this map anyway, so really, I don't blame you. You know, I was flying around going, man, where is everything? You know, because it's so like, you know, some of it's hidden inside of the boxes and everything, and or just around the corner of boxes, just kind of hard to find everything. But anywho, I know there's those two anyway. Okay, another good tip is to always use your radar and what you see together. Um, on a map like Foundry, you have a lot of upper levels where an enemy can be at. Your radar will pick them up as if they're right in front of you. But they are not the best way to balance. Uh, this they are not the, way, the best way to balance this is to stay a little, a little tricky grammar here to stay aware of your area of sight. By doing this, you'll be giving yourself an edge over those pesky shotgunners. I do not do this. Who hide up top to jump you? 
Uh, I can see how that could be frustrating. Anyway, my next round of tips is for those forgers out there. Many times I play on Foundry Forge map, uh, I always think to myself, hmm, this map would be awesome if it had a second level like Isolation. Well, I found a way to make it build, make it to build a top floor and bottom floor. To do this, make a regular crate that you find on all other maps and place it on the ground, then place a wall on top of it and delete the crate on the bottom. And there you have, uh, or, and there you go, the wall acts like a floor and, that you can walk on and have fights on top of. If you cover the entire map with these, you'll have a two-floored map that, after adding a couple of hiding spots such as hang up high, you have a very fun BR swap map. I'm currently working on a map like this then, hope to have it done relatively soon. That sounds really cool. Huh, okay. Second floor, cool. Very interesting. He said, also, did you know that the windows in the back rooms can be removed? It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, they can. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, shout out to the God Tacular Bible Study. I would just like to thank you guys for giving me a good time Monday when I actually jumped in. Well, why I jumped in, why, who knows. Maybe God had a plan. But I hope to see you guys in the future. Keep on doing whatever it is that you like to do, that preferred thing that you like to do, the things you like doing. Okay, blah, blah, blah. He says the same thing over and over like ten times. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Well, no, that is a good uh, forge tip, though, uh, as far as laying those walls on the side and then deleting what's under them, and then you can make a floating second level. Yeah. Actually, it's... Uh, I've seen a... I've heard of these, these forges... Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I'm oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Go ahead, dude. Uh, I've seen. I just downloaded a bunch of maps uh, today and last night on Foundry, and uh, a lot of them did have like second level, uh, like floors and stuff. And uh, I didn't really play on them too much. It was just me, but it seemed like it'd make really interesting gameplay if you uh, had a bunch of power weapons and things like that hidden throughout the map. It really uh, seems to increase the size of the level. Now, I wonder, would you be able to, like, place a box and then place a larger box, place the wall at an angle between those two boxes, and then delete those boxes, and then have it still flow at an angle? Uh, it will, actually. Um, like, a lot of the new objects in Foundry, like walls and stuff, are actually stationary after you, like, don't touch them. Um, if you guys have seen, like, the Bungie 500 map, they've got a bunch of... Um, angled walls to make a bank turn, and that's really interesting. Oh, nice. Bungie 500. We'll have to check that one out, man. Sounds cool. Is that on the Bungie Definitely. favorites? or? Uh, it might be. I don't remember. I know I got it from uh, the Bungie forums. I was just searching around. I'm sure if you did a search, you could find it there. Uh, it's pretty popular right now on the threads. Cool. Well, I think you're up, Zervon. What's next, man? Okay. A cool cucumber... Sends in this. Three words describe Foundry. Best Forge map. Am I right? Aren't I? Anyway, fighting on the original Foundry can be quite the stuff. You could be walking until stuff. the blink... <laughs> Sorry. Blink... <laughs> Sorry. Oh, <I'm> <laughs> Same <laughs> quite the stuff, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking stuff. You're... Yeah, okay. One word for domination on this map. Spikers. Whatever Bungie employee made this map was obviously a Spiker fan. If you dual wield, you are basically unstoppable on this close quarters map. Of course, how to take out the bad boys standing on the crates from Void Crate Factory, whose motto is, even though it's 2552, we still make crates manually. <laughs> okay, back on to, <laughs> back on to taking out those stuff heads. Who stand on crates with battle <laughs> rifles and snipers. Plasma rifle. The plasma-based weapon is quite effective at mid to half long range. I figured it out. Charge the stuff head on the crate while dodged fire and returning some. When you get there, your enemy is either dead or is down to beeping red health. Jump and give him a good spanking. <laughs> Keep on fragging the oh. heads and that say in this futile attempt... I can has recon. <laughs> I can has recon. <laughs> no wow, can has so recon. Okay, expensive. thanks. Bye. Stuff heads. <laughs> yeah, really. That was awesome, dude. He like <laughs> incorporated like ten <laughs> ten things from uh, previous shows in there. Wow. Uh no, pretty good. Pretty good. That shows uh, Mr. Cucumber is paying attention. That guy's a cool cucumber, I must say. 
<laughs> All right, so we're going to go to Drop Dead Nick. And this one is, you know, I'm going to take this one personal because it, it will help me the next time I play on Foundry. Take a sniper, uh, sniper rifle and head to where the rockets are. Pick up a gravity lift, jump on the truck, then on the box near rockets. Throw down the lift to the box that has the rockets inside and jump on the top. This is a perfect sniping place because you can see almost the whole map. Keep on fragging trucks. Drop dead Nick. Okay. So, so that's how you do it. <laughs> so he's saying... Because I've seen people with the gravity lift where they're, you know, it's above, it's below where they're sniping. And I've always wondered why it's doing here. <laughs> Nobody's using this perfectly good grav lift. Yeah, that, that lift is, is actually on the ground floor at the, like at the bottom curve of the U. So it's it's right at the um, opposite at the far end of where the rockets are, and the rockets are on the second floor. So I guess you grab mm -hmm. that lift, and instead of using it to get up to the second floor real quick, it'll take a little bit longer and jump on top of the truck to get up there, and then use the lift to get on top of where the rockets are, and then use that to snipe. I can see how that can be really valuable, especially since the um, you know that is a, pretty much the highest point in the map, I think, with all the boxes. Yeah, yeah that's definitely a good tip. I'm definitely gonna. Attempt to remember it the next time I play and use this. Dead. But good stuff there, drop tag Nick. Okay, well, diggity. on to Odd dun, Fluence. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's like Drop Dead Fred, except not. <laughs> okay, well, on to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> on to Odd Fluence, who says, uh, okay, seventh submission. All right, he's keeping track. Well, Foundry. I, in fact, I can't say much for objective games except for VIP. Well, anyway, in VIP, uh, you should go to one of the back rooms with a close-range weapon. Or, if you can't secure the shotgun, leave at least one other person to guard the VIP. If someone were to attack him while he chills out in the room from the other players, uh, while he chills out in the room, the other players should travel in a group to hunt down the VIP. Now, for Standard Slayer, this map is great for grenades. There are so many walls and corners to throw grenades around. Also, if you can easily get on top of the boxes with an easy grenade jump, so, use many frags. This map is mainly used uh, by me in Forge and Griffball. It's always fun to use the canvas to think of different things to do. I did make an obstacle course that I had to use many grenade jumps to get to the other boxes. Anyway, Griffball is awesome. Good job. Uh, no, He says, good job, no wait, awesome job, Rooster Teeth, you guys rock. But when you uh, start, uh, wait about a second before you run for the ball. This will prevent you from dying instantly when everyone meets in the middle with a huge hammer fest and it gets just splats everyone all over the place. When you do get the ball, you can jump around easily with all the hammer falls. When your team has the ball, send someone way ahead and clear the way. They have two other people near the ball carrier to really take out the others. The close ones should use the sword to prevent the damage to your friends. Now, on defense, have your sword out. If you hit the ball carry, he'll die instantly with the sword. Okay, well that was more about Griff Ball. If you haven't played it yet, download it and invite all your friends and play it. Alright, you guys rock. Keep on doing the podcast for years to come. You know what? You should film you fragging the infamous truck that gets fragged about eight times every podcast. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, Offluence has to go. Yes, that would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we totally should, man. No, but he makes a good point here because... I when I finally got the hang of of this game type, I kept telling my teammates go in front of me. It was only six of us, so it was three per team. No, actually it was it was eight. And I kept telling them, look, treat it as a football game. You guys are my lead blockers. I'll grab I'll grab the bomb, and just distract the opposing team because I'm faster. But of course nobody wanted to do that, so I wind up doing it for them and I, I distracted them I sacrificed and you know allowing them to attempt to score but yes it's fun there is some strategy to it if it works it's a really fun game but it requires a lot of teamwork yeah definitely I mean which is something people don't really really like yeah there's there's a lot of uh, I mean really there's a lot of strategy to this game you know it's it's not quite as complex as like a football game necessarily but you know considering you don't have as many people, um, you can't really pass the ball uh, easily anyway. Um, but, you know, there's still a lot to it. I mean, you can, with being able to knock people back with the hammers and being able to hit multiple people with the hammers and stuff, 
it's uh, it definitely once you you get past how fun it is originally, you start to realize that whoa, there's we can actually like make a strategy. Like you guys go this way, you guys go that way. You know, I need this many blockers in front of me, and you know, I need people on this side, and enough to if this guy gets taken out, I still have someone blocking me, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, man, that game is like super fun, no matter how you play it. You know? Yes, it is. I think a lot of the key too is uh, keeping track of how close your teammates are. Can't tell you how many times I uh, died due to betrayals because people are just swinging their hammers around like <laughs> nobody else. Yeah, is yeah, that's a big one too. Yeah, that's a that's a big one where I mean it would be cool if you can time it right where you can have the bomb carrier in front of you and and maybe time it like a grenade jump where you know I would swing and the, and the ball carrier would jump at the right time and kind of get a boost. I don't know, just weird thinking. No, definitely. In fact, uh, that could be interesting. Someone did that on, uh, I think it was on a recent show that were, they were talking about that, where someone got uh, hit by the hammer. I, I don't remember if it was their team or the opposite team, and ended up flying through the air and landed right on the plant spot. Oh man! <laughs> so that could be a tactic if you do it right, man. Just get your team to uh, just jump right before they hit you, and just get the timing down to where you can just work together on it and get knocked right into it. No, that would be nice. It would be. Actually, a very good strategy. I mean, one it, it would be one of those where it won't work all the time, which is a good thing. Yeah, no doubt. Well, Zervon, what else we got, man? We have Soul Shadow Dude. He says, party up with friends and players who have already gone past the level you're shooting for. Usually, when I do, I learn things almost every game just by playing with them. Also look at the theater to see how your friends played every once in a while to see what your friends did for tactics. It should help you figure out what works best. Also look at yourself to see what you're doing wrong and try to do something else when and if that situation arises again. Yeah, I don't use theater enough, man. I should hmm. use it more. Hey. Yeah, I, I try to use it as much as I can. Sometimes I actually sit there using theater be more than I would actually play in a game. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, I guess... Uh, yeah. You know, the only thing is, like, people, you know, it's it's hard not to just, like, jump right back into matchmaking. You got it all set up and everything's all, you know, already uh, partied up and all that stuff. That's the only thing, you know? Yeah. No, it's a lot of nice little features thrown around everywhere. Yeah, all right, Psalm 116 says, <clears throat> Here are some tips for the default map settings on Foundry. At first, I found Foundry a little confusing. I felt like a like a maze. It felt like a maze, and I found it difficult to communicate with my teammates where I was. When you look and play Foundry, it's deceiving, but it's actually symmetric, but not like narrows or the pit, but side by side. Think horizontal. If you take the time to explore the map without all the chaos, there are signs, landmarks, and numbers that you can tell your teammates where you you or your opponents are. Keep in mind when you first start the mat the match, your opponents will not will not be across the map, but in an area next to you divided by a wall. If you look face forward, you will notice two big fans in the back wall, closer to the ceiling, and each and under each fan are the numbers one and two that divide the area in half. These numbers are also uh, also appear above you when you first spawn into action. In the middle of the map room Below where the rockets, uh, the rocket launcher spawns, there are two big signs with the letters A and B, each one having an arrow under them pointing to the left and to the right side of the map. Area A, area B. If you can also find these same, you can also find these same signs under a ramp along the side of the room. Take note, area A has a forklift and a truck in it, and each side has a sniper rifle in the back corner. Ah, so you were right where that was. Communicate. Who, me? Yeah, yeah, where the sniper rifle was. I was right on something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a lucky guess. <laughs> <laughs> you played it. I he says, it. communicate. I'm finding... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm using my uh, bluff card. <laughs> I'm finding players are taking advantage of all the crates and walls that you can walk and jump from. I'd like to give a shout out to Chucky J and everybody that participated in God Tacular. I appreciate all the efforts you put into it every week. I would also like to give a shout out to Captain Safety and HaloJunkie.net, supplying everybody's Halo fix. Love the show. Take care, guys. 
Well, thank you very much there, Psalm 160. Cool. Thanks for that heads up with the uh, with the visual uh, landmarks there, because that is interesting, and it's a lot easier. Yeah, I didn't know about that about the numbers 1 and 2 and about the A and B markers in the center of the map. I only knew they were on the sides, so that does help a lot to understand where, where you are. Yeah, it does, and, you know, I, I, I knew that all along, but I just didn't want to say nothing. Oh, bluff card again, eh? <laughs> How many of those things do you have, man? Like a whole deck or what? Jeez. <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't use them last year, so uh, they allowed me to roll over a few bluff cards from last year. Oh, so it's like vacation, like vacation time. time. I see how it works. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so do you, like, earn exactly. three bluff cards a month? Three bluff cards. <laughs> yeah. See how it works? Every six months. <laughs> <laughs> every six months. Oh man, you gotta get a new job, man. I get three every week. <laughs> Dude, your job is short on bluff. <laughs> All right. Nice. Well, on to Trigger Happy Fifty Five. Right. He says, "I don't know if this is what you guys are looking for, but here goes. On the side of Foundry with the big windows, on the right side when you're looking for the base, if you put a ramp as close to one of the windows as you can." On top of the ramp, you make a turret and place it as close as possible to the window. Then you get on the turret, turn so you're through the window, and then uh, I think you get off of it and you're out of the map. Oh, nice. So that, that's an easy way to get out of the map and not have to deal with, like, placing objects and picking them up and going back and forth and all that. Anyway, he says, my gamer tag is TriggerHappy54, even though his username is TriggerHappy55. That's cool, though, man. I, I can awesome. try that out. Yeah, I definitely got to give it a shot, and, and since you can save it, uh, you know, on your uh, game save feature, and see how you do it. Yeah, yeah, hopefully you can just turn right into a uh, monitor once you get out there and spawn some uh, spawn some gear or something, I don't know. Yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Take a warthog and go flying off into the uh, <laughs> into the hills out there, that'd be cool. That'd be quite fun. I always thought we would be able to do that from, like, the original trailers and stuff. They said it was all geometry, but there's walls. Yeah, they just block things off. Yeah, you can put some uh, Dukes of Hazard music on. And just a good old boys. <laughs> Jump and stuff. Oh, man, don't get that song stuck in my head again. Never no harm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember the last time we did that. Yeah, we put that in the outtakes of the show, and it was just, oh, for a week, I was just, good old boys. <laughs> I'm making the way, <laughs> the only way they know how. Fighting the system like yeah. a true modern day Robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's. Uh, yeah, before we start going into more chill country songs. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need any more uh, Goth Brook esque country Born hits. Country. <laughs> Can't have too much country. I know, man. It's like cowbell. It's just there's never, never enough. I need more cowbells. <laughs> I have a fever, <laughs> and the only prescription is more cowbells. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> that was awesome, dude. <laughs> that was an awesome move, uh, segment. <laughs> oh yeah. I wish they had Christopher Walken and do a voiceover in Halo Three. Oh man, that would have been awesome. That would have definitely. I need a weapon. I mean, come on, imagine. That'd be great. <laughs> wow. Wow, Cortana. That's great. I mean, I do a bad Christopher Walken, but, you know. I mean, but you can just imagine. <laughs> no, you got, like, the uh, like the accent's a little funny, but, like, the way that he talks, that's, that's pretty much spot on, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's the only one of the wow. Anyway. Yeah, that's a good wow. <laughs> okay. Thanks. I worked on that for many years. <laughs> I went to wow school. Oh, there goes another bluff card, man. I probably say wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, you're 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 using them all oh. at once now, man. You better you better start saving up after this. I'm going to go to my boss, dude, man. I need some bluff cards. Is man. there any way I can get yeah, an advance need... on some cards? And, uh, I'll I'll get negative cards for a while, <laughs> then I'll save them up to get back to zero. <laughs> I'll Sounds work really like an addiction. Hard, dude. 
Sounds like yeah, an addition right. that's not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to lay off the cards I need for a it, while. man. <laughs> lay off the block. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go to card All rehab. Right, so who's next? <laughs> Hi, I'm JVB, and I'm a bluff user. <laughs> Hi, JVB. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do one or two yeah, more. I think you're up oh, zero. I just saw I just saw Fumo Jive on American Idol. Cool. Oh yeah. Anyway, I think I was singing blah blue blah 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 blah. Blah blue blah 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 blue blah 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 blue the blah blah. Woman, you're my blah blue blah blah. <laughs> Blah, nice. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> 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 All right, so Fu, you're next, right? Or or is it uh, Zervon? I think Zervon. Zervon. Excellent. Dude, your name... Idle Wild, SSH. Your, I, I gotta say, though, your name, it sounds like a, uh, like a Power Rangers bad guy. Or maybe like a Voltron bad guy or something like that. <laughs> well, there was Pr- Prince Zarkon in Voltron. But Zervon sounds like a villain in the next Superman movie. Like, kneel before Zervon! <laughs> I I it that. does sound like a Superman guy, doesn't it? <laughs> like on Superman 4, the one with Richard Pryor? <laughs> 2. Remember Superman 2? Is that what it was? Number 2? Yeah, where, where uh, the three leather-clad S&M uh, <laughs> villains came in. To Earth. Wasn't it like one of the guys had like this this graying hair and like um and like a, a goatee and dude I, mm-hmm. I can't remember it's been a really freaking long yes, time. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Neil before Zervon sounds Z- pretty close. Uh, Z- I don't know. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> it probably was. Man. That's where you got it from. Uh, I knew it. <laughs> might have been. I don't know. <laughs> I hate but Superman. That's way, it's a cool name, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep in a tub of kryptonite <laughs> in case he comes after me. Molten kryptonite. <laughs> I have a necklace full of kryptonite beads. <laughs> I wear a kryptonite nose ring, <laughs> eyebrow ring, uh, earrings, uh, <laughs> I have kryptonite tattoos. <laughs> I have kryptonite weave woven clothes. I <laughs> I even got kryptonite teeth. <laughs> bling bling, I got kryptonite contact lenses. <laughs> Dude, if I was Lex Luthor, that's what I would do. Heck yeah. Just freaking wear a big ass belt. Grill. Oops, sorry. Big old belt with uh kryptonite, you know, big old kryptonite. Belt buckle and nice kryptonite skin shoes with a big K on the belt be like buckle. Like a, a gangster with the. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be a gangster with like the kryptonite grill. That'd be pretty sweet. Your <laughs> mouth would glow. Heck yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I'll put li- li- little John, whoever he is, on. You know, put him to shame. Dude, it could say like on the on the front four teeth, it could say dude, Superman bling. Dude, on the front four teeth, it could say K R Y P. What? Crip? Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm down with the crip tonight, crew. <laughs> exactly. The colors will be green. It'll be neon green, green and green. You know? <laughs> Oh man! Well, this, we we kind of swerved yeah. to a totally different. <laughs> we, just, we just started a gang, I think. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <The> crip. <laughs> All right. Who's next? I think you're up, Zervon. Do one or two more here. Idle Wild, SSH, SHS, even. As we all know, Foundry is a blank canvas ready to be filled. I've discovered a few fun layouts and game types on this map. One variation is paintball. You can set up your field however you like and make each team start behind shield doors. The game type should be instant kill, and from entry-level plasma pistols, or what I like to call hardcore carbines, 
Try to use Covenant weapons because you can see the bullets and plasma fly in the air. The other is Sabotage. The game type can also be can also go with any map. Go into Forge and create and change the game type to Assault. Make one bomb spawn and two bomb plants closer to the defending team. The defenders obviously defend while attackers choose which point to attack. Spawns can be turned off if desired, but bomb arm time should be 5 seconds and 20 second fuse. It takes a lot of team a lot of team strategy. Shootouts to shout outs to Skarmageddon and Duino. Hmm. Duino. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> nice. That's Duino, that's a pretty funky name. Yeah, I am Duino, <laughs> lover of lamps. <laughs> I'm Duino, member of the Crips. <laughs> <laughs> and the name of the villain, the the leader of the villain, is Zod, General Zod. Ah, from Command and Conquer. Kneel before Zod. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you got Duino and you got Zervon from the Kryptonites. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, man. Duino. My name is Duino. I <laughs> love me. <laughs> Anyway, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you got... I guess we should uh, move along. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Duino's running out of steam real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Duino. <laughs> it's like it worked for about oh, five man. seconds. Anyway, you're up, dude. Jimmy <laughs> Okay, so here we go with uh, Zezeka. Zezeka says... Hi, Zezeka here. When I first heard about the Forge capabilities on Foundry, I thought that hundreds of different cool maps are going to be shared and make Halo 3 an even longer lasting game. After I got the map, I experimented with some things I saw on the Red vs. Blue episode where they tore the maps. I am trying now to make a series of man cannons that once you get on one, you are flung around and keep hitting more than one man cannon. And never touch the ground. Hmm, that would be pretty interesting. What would also be cool is if you could throw a grenade from one part of the map. It hits a new, it hits a few man cannons and hits a guy at any part of the map. Who knows? Maybe someone will make Ford, uh, Foundry one big circus arena. Keep up the good work, guys. All right. Well, if you can do that, where you can make all these man cannons propel you without touching the ground please submit submit it and uh i i would love to see that one have you guys seen some of the i think i've actually seen something yeah the like the elaborate suicides go ahead yeah yeah i saw that one that was, that was pretty <laughs> that was very entertaining i think there's also something similar where people like uh i've seen one on epitaph where you go through the lift and then you hit a teleporter and since you're like in that forward motion, it keeps going through all the teleporters until you finally land like somewhere. I think it's a, like the same spot that you started. It's pretty interesting because you go through the whole map through teleporters and stuff. I've seen one like that too, um, where they end up at the end because as you go through the tor- teleporter, you actually gain speed. So they do that like ten or fifteen times, and towards the end, they go flying way straight up into the air. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, and, and it seems like, you know, the uh, Bungie added some, you know, tr- uh, tractor trailers and stuff like that. Little, little things that make a, a difference in Forge. I mean, we can only expect more from that. You know, it would be kind of cool, though, to get, like, this circus map he's talking about, where, like, you have, like, uh, man cannons going along all, all along the sides of the map. And then, like, somebody throws a couple of stickies in there, and the stickies are just kind of, like, bouncing around the map the whole time as you're playing. I don't know, I just think that would be kind of stupid and cool at the same time. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, we better wrap this puppy up here. Get it on on time. Yeah, let's do it. We'll send in your comments, etc. to podtacular at gmail.com. We depend on your submissions to keep the show going. Keep an eye on podtacular.com for an invitation to send in stuff for next week's show. And sorry for the people that we couldn't... uh, finish all the stuff you sent in this show be sure to send stuff in uh, mm-hmm. next week yes and you can call our listener voicemail at 206 888 halo and that's 206 888 and the word halo which is h-a-l-o 
and leave a Halo-related message. We play these back regularly on the Collins and Tales from the Foxhole show. Yeah, uh, be sure to check us out at podtaiko.com, and while you're there, check out the forums. There's lots of events, projects, and ways to make friends and play Halo with cool people. And thanks to all the people that contribute to Podtacular, whether it's working on the community or site, contributing to our PayPal to help out with the hosting bill, digging us, digging the podcast on dig.com, or subscribing to the show and reviewing us in iTunes. We couldn't do it without you guys. Check out the other shows on the GamerCast Network, GamerTag Radio, Uncle Gamer, Sarcastic Gamer, Achievement Junkie, and the GCN Video Game Show. And until next time, I'm Fumo Jeff. And I am JVB. And I am Zervon. Lord of Kryptonite. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for joining us, Zervon. And uh, before we, we wrap this up, why don't you plug your site and show one more time? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Just tell us where you can find uh, more about Second Foundation. Oh, gotcha. Um, you can find us at uh, second-foundation.net. Right on. All right, we'll keep on fragging trucks. Awesome, man. Keep on looking for Nene's and Duino. Duino is the new new member of the Nene fan club. Don't quote me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> founding, <laughs> founding member of the uh, the Kryptonites and Superman haters. <laughs> the Crips, the Knights, <laughs> Cryptophiliacs. <laughs> There's only one thing left to say. Because, you know, they're Halo kids. Sometimes that can be bad. And sometimes it's good, but you just never know sometimes. But when you, uh... Actually, let me call him it. feel like an idiot for saying that. <laughs> just like, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it isn't, like sometimes it is. Well, that can be sometimes good. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. <laughs> Hopefully the, uh... Mama say, mama say, mama poo, saw. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> blah, da, blah, da, blah, blah. Nah. <laughs> that was great, dude. <laughs> You're like, blah, da, blah. Blah, da, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Stereo. Blah, blah. <laughs> The word is black and filled with darkness. Blah 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. Gamer cast.